So, what's actually the difference between an American Akita and the Japanese Akita? Well, in today's video, we're going to get to the bottom of it once and for all. Welcome back to The Canine Show. I'm Will, I'm a behaviorist, and I'm the owner of FenrirDogTraining.com. My passion is helping people choose the right breed for their lifestyles and then to become amazing owners and raise perfect canine companions. So, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. But back to the video. We have two dogs with the same name. Well, or do we? We'll actually stop right here and start with looking at their names first before we jump into the other differences. So in different countries, these dogs are referred to as different things. And with the internet allowing people from all these different countries to chat to each other, it's easy to see where this confusion has come from. For example, some countries call the American Akita just the Akita, and the Japanese version the Japanese Akita, and some places call the Japanese Akita the Akita, and the American version the American Akita. Then on top of that, some places call the Japanese Akita the Akita Inu, and then the American Akita the Great Japanese Dog. It's one of those scenarios where none are really wrong, but for today's video we'll keep it really simple and we'll have the American version, the American Akita, and the Japanese version, the Japanese Akita, which will allow me to explain the actual differences easier. So now we have that covered, I think, because just saying that out loud has confused me already, but let's move on to the origins in the breed's history, and that's where we can see them really split off from each other, why they did, and then that will allow us to better understand the differences in looks and temperaments that we'll discuss a little later on in the video. So the origins of the Akita are found in Japan many hundreds of years ago, and that original dog was much smaller than both Akitas that we see today. There are records showing that these dogs were used as hunting companions and were especially skilled at hunting uh, bears. But they were also unfortunately used for lots of different blood sports and mainly dog fighting. They were also often killed for fur to make warm clothes and they were eaten when times were hard. Around the late 1800s these dogs were mixed with tosas and other mastiff type breeds which increased their size but lost some of that spitz type feature that the originals had. The breed began to stabilise and thrive in Japan until World War II. The war times made food very scarce and many Akitas were left to starve or killed for food for starving people. And eventually the Japanese government even ordered that all the Akitas to be killed on site to stop the risk of spreading infections. Many owners set their dogs free in the mountains or mixed them with German shepherds as they were exempt from the culling. But this made the breed nearly go extinct. After the war, due to the efforts of many of the breed enthusiasts, they managed to save the breed right from the brink of extinction. And the nation's love for the breed made them quickly thrive again. And American servicemen brought many back with them after falling in love with the breed during the occupation years after the war. And although Helen Keller had already brought Akitas back to the US, it was during this time that the American Akita really got a foothold in the US. The Americans preferred the larger fighting Akitas and those that had been bred with the German Shepherds and it was those types that were most commonly brought back to America and then they continued to breed larger, more intimidating dogs. However, the Japanese at the same time were working hard to restore the breed to its original state of smaller fox spitz like original Akita Inus and over the time the differences became pretty evident. And even though the breeds share the same ancestry, they are clearly different dogs in terms of looks today. Which, if I say so myself, is a perfect segue to discussing the differences in the looks. So, like I mentioned, the American Akita is a larger dog growing upwards of 28 inches tall and could weigh up to 130 pounds. With the Japanese Akita often being a good 3 or 4 inches shorter and often around 20 pounds lighter. American Akitas are allowed to be any combination of colours, whereas the Japanese variants must be either red, fawn, sesame, brindle or pure white with Uraijo markings. And when side by side you can clearly see the difference in the head and the face. The American Akita has a more intimidating head with somewhat shepherd-like features which is most probably from the German Shepherds that was mixed in during the war, whereas the Japanese has that much more friendly, almost fox-like head, distinctive of other Spitz-type breeds. 
So you know where they split in time, you know how and why they look different, but did any of this change their temperaments between the two variations? Well, to put it simply, no, not really. The Kennel Club looks for the following temperaments. The American Akita is ideally alert, friendly, courageous and dignified, and the Japanese Akita is ideally independent, reserved, confident and loyal. Both types of Akitas are very intelligent dogs. They are independent thinkers with strong characters, which means these dogs are not the best choice for first time dog owners. They do need to be handled and trained using a gentle yet firm and consistent hand and they need to know where their place in the household is for them to really be truly well-rounded dogs. It is in an Akita's genes to protect, which is what they have always been bred to do, which is a trait that should never be forgotten in this breed if you're planning on bringing one into your home. Now, did you find that helpful? If so, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here. What two breeds do you want me to break down the differences of next, or do you have any other questions you'd like me to answer? Make sure you leave them down in the comment section below, and if YouTube is still playing silly buggers with my comments by disabling them for no real reason, then you can email me your comments or questions or suggestions on the canineshowquestions at gmail.com. The link to that is in the description box below as well. You click top left to see my current 32 breed knockout tournament where we're discovering the best guard dogs for first time owners, or click bottom left for another video that I think you'll enjoy. Thanks again for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you are new here so you never miss the next episode of The Canine Show.